Welcome geometry to chapter seven, section four, properties of special parallelograms. We are gonna be in our textbook on page 388. You should have it open because we're gonna copy some stuff down together. Now I was thinking about doing this on GeoGebra for you, but one, the figures are actually quite easy to draw. And as I say a lot, you get a better understanding of what you're doing if you draw it out. So I started drawing, you can pause at any time to catch up with me. But on page 80, uh, 388, I wanted to make sure that I had the basics down. So you do need to copy down the core concept. Remember, you also need to write notes to yourself to make sure that you know what's going on, okay? So you can follow along on the textbook, in the textbook with me as you draw. So we know, I'm gonna get another color here, um, that it's a rhombus if it's a parallelogram, okay? It's a parallelogram with four congruent sides. Remember, pause at any moment to write down words to help you remember this in the future. We know that a parallelogram is a rectangle if there are four right angles. And finally, we know that it's a square if there are four congruent sides like a rhombus and four congruent angles. Okay, so again, you should pause. Write down anything important to help you remember uh, the properties of these special parallelograms. And then we're gonna talk about the corollaries, okay? So we have a corollary. Uh, these are the numbers, but there's one for a rhombus, one for a rectangle, and one for a square as well. So when you're ready, let's go through. So we know that a quadrilateral is a rhombus if and only if, if and only if we have four congruent sides. So that means that AB is congruent to BC, is congruent to CD, is congruent to AD. We know that a quadrilateral is a rectangle if and only if, by the way, if and only if, if can be abbreviated IFF, if and only if. A quadrilateral is a rectangle if and only if it has four right angles. So angle A is congruent to angle B, is congruent to angle C, is congruent to angle D. You should be writing them down and they are all right angles, 90 degrees. And then finally, a quadrilateral is a square if and only if we have four congruent sides and four congruent angles. Now on page 389, there is a really cool Venn diagram to help uh, organize your thoughts on where squares fit in with rhombuses and rectangles, okay? And if you need to, go ahead and uh, read example one or go to the dynamic ebook and take a look at um, the videos for examples one and two. We're going to uh, go down to the monitoring progress at the bottom page 389. I'm going to flip my notebook around, write it down, and then make sure you can see what I'm writing. And you can take this moment to draw out what they're asking us to draw for any square. So I want a picture. I want you to have a picture. J, K, L, M. Is it always or sometimes true that JK is gonna be perpendicular to KL. All right, so I wanna make sure you can see here. All right, so for any square, okay, so we know it's a square. So let's start filling in what I know. I know this and I know this. Now they're asking me for JK is it perpendicular to KL? Is that always or sometimes true? Always. 
because for a square, for it to be a square, we know that um, every angle is going to be 90 degrees, which means that any two um, consecutive sides, you know, one and then the other, have to be perpendicular to each other. Okay. All right, let's take a look at number two. And again, we're going to draw it out. We get a better understanding if we draw it out makes life easier in the future. Excuse my messy artwork. We have a rectangle EFGH. So is it always or sometimes true that FG is congruent to GH? So for any rectangle EFGH, okay, so we know it's a rectangle. What do we know? We know this. And what else do we know about a rectangle? Well, we know that these two sides are gonna be congruent with each other. And we know that these two sides are gonna be congruent with each other. So now, is it always true that FG is gonna be congruent to GH? Well, always, um, no, uh, not always. Is it sometimes true? Could this rectangle ever have two consecutive sides that are congruent? Yeah, what would it be called? It'd be called a square, right? So if this rectangle were a square, then it would be true that FG is congruent to GH. All right, last one on page 389 before we do a little bit more math. Uh, excuse me while my... I'm doing the online textbook as I do this video and my uh, toolbar just keeps wanting to pop up. A quadrilateral has four congruent sides and four congruent angles. Sketch the quadrilateral and classify it. Four congruent sides, so they should all be fairly equal in length. four congruent angles. Well, it's a quadrilateral. All the angles have to add up to 360 degrees. Divide that by four. So we know that each angle needs to be 90 degrees. So what did I just sketch? I just sketched a square. Okay. Pause. Make sure you have reasonings. I said this out loud, you might want to go back and write down why this is always true. Write down why this is sometimes true. And then, of course, if you need to add any notes to number three to help you remember, um, do so. And now, okay, we need to sketch out the diagonals. All right, so turn to page 390. And this will be the last bit for rhombuses. Okay. So theorem 711 and 712, the diagonals theorem. Okay, so this is super important for being able to do the math that's coming up. Okay, so we have a parallelogram. Now, of course, the parallelogram is going to be a rhombus, right? We have a parallelogram, A, B, C, D. We know that these two sides are parallel to those two sides. And yeah, you should be drawing with me. Let me scroll down so that you can see. I apologize, I was looking at page 390 as I was doing that. Okay, so for theorem 7.11, pause and continue if you're not ready to move on. A parallelogram is a rhombus. Okay, so this parallelogram is gonna be a rhombus if and only if the diagonals, okay, so the diagonals, let me get this out. Are perpendicular. Okay, so write that down. This parallelogram is a rhombus if and only if the diagonals are perpendicular. More words than what I just wrote. Okay, let's draw another 
parallelogram that of course will be a rhombus, but we don't know it's a rhombus yet. We have to figure out why is it a rhombus. So we know that a parallelogram is a rhombus, not just if there are um, opposite side, or sorry, all sides are congruent and opposite sides are parallel, um, but we know a parallelogram is a rhombus if the diagonals are perpendicular, so they form 90 degree angles. And now we also can say that what we have is a rhombus if and only if the diagonals, oops, obviously I'm not an artist, if and only if each diagonal bisects, splits in two, bisects a pair of opposite angles. So in other words, this diagonal splits angle A into two equal parts and angle C into the same equal parts, angle B into two equal parts and angle D into the same two equal parts. So we do know, of course, it's a parallelogram. Angle A is congruent to angle C. Angle B is congruent to angle D. We know that. But now we're saying that angle DAC is congruent with DCA, is congruent with ACB, is congruent with BAC, right? So each, there's now four congruent parts. We bisected opposite angles bisected, split into two equal parts, opposite angles, then it's a rhombus. This parallelogram is a rhombus, okay? All right, some great examples to help clarify if what I'm saying is not good enough. Page 390, let's move on to 391. We actually are gonna have to look at um, page 390 to answer number four. I need to turn my page, I'm gonna draw it. So this is page 391, number four at the top, but it says to look at example three. So I'm drawing example three. Which of course means you are too. And I do wanna mix and match my colors so that I have a better understanding. Oh gosh. You are lucky, or I am lucky that I am not embarrassed by the fact that I am not an artist. Okay. In example three, what is the measure of angle ADC and the measure of angle BCD? All right. So according to page 390, example three at the bottom, this is a rhombus. Okay, so now I know certain things. Um, I know that angle one is 90 degrees, right? The diagonals have to be perpendicular. I know that angle two and angle three both have to be 61 degrees because uh, if this is 61 degrees, this is 61 degrees, this is 61 degrees, and this is 61 degrees. Now, angle four, I'd have to do some math, right? I know that all these angles, oh, they actually just, they split it into a triangle. I was going to do it a little differently. Um, but example three, they find out the measure uh, of angle four is going to be 29 degrees. So now we want to know the measure of angle A, D, C, and B, C, D. Okay. So the measure of angle A, D, C, and the measure of angle B, C, D. Well, actually the measure of angle B, C, D, well, that's just going to be 61 times two, right? 61 times two. So that would be 100 and 22 degrees, right? If this is 61 is half of the whole thing, then the whole thing is gonna be 122 degrees. Now, they did find out that angle four is 29 degrees. So 
uh, 29 times two, well, 30 times two is 60, take away two, that the whole angle ADC should be 58 degrees. Um, I kind of want to check my work though. The entire rhombus is supposed to add up to 360 degrees, all the interior angles, right? So angle uh, DAB plus ABC plus BCD and CDA, all that's supposed to add up to 360, which means that these two have to add up to 180. So do they? I'll just take a look at this. So let's see, 58 plus 122. Well, 58 plus two is 60. 60 plus 120 is 180. So I did a good job. Okay. Another way of looking at number four though, because what the book did in example three, and we were supposed to read example three and find out that angle four is 29 degrees, which means the whole thing is 29 times two. Sorry, let me just make sure that's clear. Now, what we could have done was take this rhombus, right? And if we know that this is 61 degrees, then we know that this is 122 degrees, which means this is 122 degrees. And since we know that every quadrilateral's interior angles add up to 360, we could have taken away 122 and then taken away 122 again, right? And do some quick math. I'm gonna actually use my phone calculator for this because I do not want to make a mistake on my video. And you can be using your phone calculator or regular calculator to get 116 degrees. So that means that this angle plus this angle, so ADC, right? Angle ADC plus angle ABC is equal to 116. So let's divide it by two. 16 divided by two is eight, 100 divided by two is 50, and there we go, 58 degrees. That is how I would have figured this out if I didn't read example three. Okay, remember math makes sense and there's lots of clues. Okay, number five, Let's switch back to green. We're gonna have to draw it as well. Okay. So we have a uh, rhombus, D, E, F, G. We have a diagonal right here. We have one, two, three, four, and we know that this is 118 degrees. Find the measures of the numbered angles in rhombus D, E, F, G. Okay, so they just want that. All right, so we wanna find the measure of angle one, the measure of angle two, the measure of angle three, and the measure of angle four. I'm listing them so that I don't forget any piece of it. Okay, all right. Well, if this is 118 degrees, we know that this is 118 degrees. If the whole thing is supposed to be 360, then we know that the half, this bottom half is just gonna be 180, okay? So it's okay. It's okay to just deal with half of it, right? So this half is 180 degrees, but we already know that this angle is taking up 118 of those degrees. So what is 180? Take away 120, 60, and then we have two more that we need to, uh, sorry, two less than we need to take away. Uh, so 118 plus two is 120 and another 60. So that's 62 degrees. So angle F or EFG to be more specific is 62 degrees, which means that angle three is gonna be 31 degrees, half of it. Angle four is gonna be 31 degrees. And guess what? They're all gonna be 31 degrees, okay? All right, this is a video just on rhombuses. It might've seemed like a lot, but a lot of it was drawing, okay? Um, you'll have a video on rectangles and squares coming up.